Hello YouTube modelers and all you race fans out there. Welcome to the Grumpy Old Scale Modeler YouTube channel. My name is Darren, AKA the Grumpy Old Scale Modeler. Here I like to bring you guys tips and tools for improving your scale modeling experience as well as really trying to promote the scale modeling community as a whole. Uh, you're gonna find here uh, different types of build reviews, build series like the one I'm working on now, uh, the 81 uh, the Salvino's 81 Monte Carlo, which I will link above. There's two episodes out of that now. As well as inbox reviews and tips and techniques just like this one. So please, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the, the subscribe button and bing that bell. And you will be notified of all new content. I do want to take a minute to bring you this video. I'm taking a break away from the build review. To bring a tip slash technique that I've been working on. I had actually posted this in several of the Facebook groups and uh, there's been a lot of questions about what I used, the tools that I used, the materials I used, and how I went about making the grills, the front grill, and the inlet duct grills or covers for my Monte Carlo. Uh, here are some pictures of that. Uh, and really all I did was take some aluminum Coke cans, some modeling mesh uh, from MCW, and a little time and a little experimentation and came up with these ducks. So I bring this tutorial to you guys and hopefully y'all could take something away from it. Uh, I, for one, like to do a little scratch building every now and again. It uh, kind of gets the creative juices flowing and it, it, and you know, it, it makes the model yours. It makes it your own. So. Uh, it makes it only one, right? It's one of one. It's your touch. There's no other like it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if, if you like doing uh, scratch building, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if uh, you, ha you have any pictures uh, of stuff that you have scratch built, uh, scratch built, please, email's in the description. Shoot me an email with a picture. I'd love to see it. So before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. I want to tell you about an upcoming video I've got coming first. Uh, which is going to cover the Salvino's Vermilion decals. Now they have come up with, for the petty cars, these Vermilion decals, which are your base covers, colors, uh, that go over the blue, and all the 43 and stuff, and your markings for STP are whited out. So I'm gonna do a, they sent me also the body, a two plus two, Pontiac two plus two, and I'm going to take this, and here's some pictures of the decals and the body itself. Uh, and I'm going to do a tutorial for the Salvino's JR Builders Club, which I also did a video on that Builders Club. I'll link above here. If you get a chance, check it out. Really good cause, great club, and I'm proud to be a member. But uh, I am going to do this tutorial for them and you are going to win because it's going to be up on YouTube and everybody can see it. So that's coming. The next thing I want to touch on real quick is uh, the Patreon page. I want to welcome our newest Patreons, uh, David Fior Fiorito. I'm probably butchering that and I apologize, David. Uh, Mike Sweeney and Cole Jacobson, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Uh, the Patreon uh, page is something we started here very recently. Uh, this is all, you know, the pledges there are all 100% optional, but they directly contribute to uh, help us produce better content for you, the viewer. So um, I'm also actually going to start taking suggestions. Now, you know, Cole Jacobson messaged me there through Patreon and asked me to expand a little bit on test fitting, uh, as in what my approach is and what it is I'm looking for. I've actually taken that on board uh, and I'm going to be talk about that actually in several upcoming episodes. So, you know, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do that more with some Patreons, so, you know, send me your suggestions and uh, I'm gonna start building content around that. So I'll post a link in the description. Uh, if you get a moment, please go ahead and check that out. Your support really does help and it was really, really appreciated. Uh, so now, enough of the cheesy promotions. Let's dive right into the tutorial. 
I want to start by going over the tools uh, that you're going to need. This is not all inclusive, but it's the tools that I used. And you're going to need, at a minimum, uh, a good set of rulers. Uh, I got this one to go down to centimeters and millimeters. This one for drawing straight lines, and uh, it's a little bit harder, so I can use my scriber. The scriber itself, I use this to mark all my lines with instead of a Sharpie or a marker because this gives me a much more accuracy when I scrape it across the aluminum. Files, which I'm going to show you uh, why this is so important in just a little bit. This aluminum really, really files down easily uh, and a couple of good files uh, is an absolute must. You're also going to need sharp blades. Now I've got two different knives that I use. I've got regular X-Acto and then I've got my curved blade. And I actually like the curved blade for starting at center holes or center openings because I can roll through the aluminum and make my cuts, okay? Uh, and then get a center piece started. So uh, a couple of good knives and let me tell you, aluminum is going to dull this very, very quickly. The next thing you're going to need is a good pair of snips. Now these are my Zuron uh, photo etch snips. They are sharp as a razor, let me tell you. And uh, they cut through the aluminum like a knife through butter, a uh, hot knife through butter. Uh, they're really good uh, shears and I highly recommend these over scissors. Next thing I use is my Sharpie. I'll show you how I use this and why I like the red Sharpie so much. Um, I actually use this to mark my uh, scribed lines, but I'll get more into depth with that here in just a little bit. Uh, sandpaper. These, this is the sandpaper I've been using. This is just 3M, actually I take that back, this is Norton. But it's the same stuff as a 3M uh, sponge. Uh, this is 150 grit and I use this for sanding all the stuff off the aluminum. So you see it works really, really well. I take it once I get all the paint off or coating and then I follow it up with a 600 grit and then a 1500 and that gives you that nice buffed aluminum finish. And let's see, a rivet tool. So I've gotten a lot of questions about my rivet tool. This is the Rosie the Riveter rivet tool. You can see right here. You can get these from Sprue Brothers or UMM. Uh, these are used a lot in aircraft modeling uh, to redo blown out recessed rivet detail on aircraft. And you can see it's broke out into aircraft scales, 72nd, 148th, and 132nd. The one I'm using here is the one millimeter for a 32nd scale aircraft. And it just just seemed to look right okay I just kind of did it by appearance and uh, they sell these now in single wheel and in double wheel so that you can get oh I guess in triple wheel but so you can get multiple rows of rivets and all be the same now these are quite expensive they're not cheap and I can tell you I'll link down below to Amazon here these are pounce wheels here's a picture of them pounce wheels these I think will work just as well as the Rosie Riveter does uh, and may serve you just, to, just as well. So just something to think about. The next thing we need is aluminum can. And here I've got my Coke Zero can. I've already cut it up. We'll talk a little bit more about the aluminum here in just a second. But uh, just a regular old soda can. Good stuff. And wire mesh. Got a lot of questions about this as well. This is from Model Car Garage. It's the MCG Model Car Garage 703 stainless steel wire mesh. Um, and those shears cut through this perfectly as well. So those, uh, oh, one more thing you're absolutely going to need, and that's tape. And why do you need tape? Well, when you're sanding this stuff, and you can see how I've got this taped edge around this. Uh, when you, I like to tape this down. It holds it flat for one, and you'll find that as you as you sand this, if you catch an edge, it's going to pull your aluminum up and crease it on you. So I like to tape it down and sand the areas that I need to. Uh, so not only that, but 
when you get in to do something like this, this is the grill I made, okay? And you can see the highlighted painted areas. Those are all one millimeter. And that's where my cutting board comes into play. That's my Infinity Easy Cut type, uh, type A cutting board. Uh, I've talked about these in the past. Absolutely one of my favorite tools. And I masked this thing completely off and painted it by using my Infinity uh, cutting board. So uh, tape and a cutting mat is essential. So those are the tools. And uh, if you've got any question about the tools, please uh, leave a comment uh, in the comments below. Uh, ask away, I'll read them all, I'll get back to you on it. Uh, but at a minimum, those are the tools that you're gonna need. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is set up here and we're gonna talk just a little bit about aluminum. Let's talk just a second about aluminum. I've been getting a lot of questions about this stuff and uh, look guys I am not into metallurgy okay I'm not a blacksmith I don't do any forging okay a lot of the questions I've been getting is in regards to annealing aluminum and I'm just going to tell you straight up I don't know that process I have done some basic reading and it seems that there is a process for annealing uh, this aluminum, uh, as in this Red Bull can, you can see it holds its shape. From my understanding, it is work hardened from the uh, manufacturing process, uh, being that it's heated up when it's stretched and made into a can. Therefore, it hardens and keeps its shape. Can it be annealed? Uh, my understanding is yes, but I believe it's quite a process. And to be honest with you, you know, you're making these small pieces you don't need to worry about that. Uh, this piece here I've cut off. Now what I do is I cut it long ways, but you cut it long ways and I can take this and I can I can pretty much kind of put it in shape where I need it. Now you gotta remember, you're gonna be sanding on this stuff. You're gonna be cutting it into thin strips. And this is an example. This is one of my prototypes that didn't turn out the way I wanted. And you can see it's extremely malleable, okay? you're going to be able to twist it and do all sorts of different things. So when you get to where you're making these smaller openings and stuff, you have to be extremely careful. You don't want to, uh, to bend things up. So it will get malleable. Uh, it's, you know, it's not really that difficult to work with. So there you go. That's what I know about aluminum. Uh, again, I'm not going to break into any details that, and just sit here and blow smoke. Uh, if there's someone out there that knows a little bit more about needling aluminum, go ahead and leave your comments in the uh, comment section below and uh, go ahead and help out our fellow modelers uh, with those questions. So next up is going to be cutting out our vents and moving on. All right, moving on to our vents. And as you can see on this piece of aluminum, I'll zoom this in here so you can see a little bit better. On this piece of aluminum, I have gone ahead and marked everything up with my scriber. I'm ready to cut it out. The parts that are going to be cut out are going to be these center sections here. Now, note that that's going to get really, really tight. And my goal here is to start that with my knife, okay, and get it to a point where I can put my flat file through there and start filing this back to my line. And we're just going to shape that with a file once we get a open opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get that sharp knife that I was talking about, the rounded one, okay? Get my Optivisor down here. And what I want is I want to come in here and I just want to rock this back and forth in here so I'll get a hole started. Then I'm going to go on the other side of that red mark and do it again. Okay? And that's going to allow me to cut through as you can see. Then I'm going to take and cut the ends off that. Cut the end off this one. And I should be able to pull that center out. Yeah, cut all the way through to the edge. There we go. 
Now I know this looks horrible, but it really isn't that bad. So, can I get underneath that and pull that out? Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm going to pull that back and pull that out. Now that is barely going to be big enough for me to get that file through there. So, I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to get a little bit closer. Let me get a, sh I need to get a new, new blade and I'll be right back. Okay, I replaced my blade and the reason why I did that is because I'll have to get a little bit closer to that outside edge than I wanted to and I want something really sharp to do that with. So, uh, pardon my optimizer because I got to get real close here. I know you're looking at the back of my head, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll roll this again, this time a little bit closer. Cut it, cut it. Now, my hole is a little bit bigger. That was really close. But now I should be able to get, there you go, I get that through there. And I can start sanding this bottom piece, filing it down, and making that hole bigger. So from this point forward, folks, it's tedious. It's all about getting in there and slowly making that opening big enough for my file and making the, the opening the proper size. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to file that back. And once I get that file, that file to the, the right clearance and opening, I'm going to come back and show you the progress. As you can see, I now have all that material taken out of there and got a nice little square hole. Now this is going to be the front. Okay. So, cause all of our markings are on the back and you can see that that is, that is fairly square. It might need a little bit more, just a little touch up. But I think once I sand that, get the screen behind it, that is going to look pretty convincing. So the next step now, one thing I like to do is I don't I don't like to cut this out. I like to keep a big piece of material here because it makes it easier to handle. And like I showed you before, this stuff gets really malleable once you cut it, cut it out. So I don't want to cut that until the very end. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and put my rivets in here. Now, just for an example, I want to go ahead and show you how that Rosie the Riveter works. If I was to have any any line, actually, we'll just do a, a red one here. Uh, usually use just a light pencil to give myself a reference as to where I'm going to make my rivets. But I can take that riveting tool or a pounce wheel, whichever one you have, uh, either one should work. And you line that up on your line here on the back side. Now, remember I said this is for making recessed rivet detail in styrene okay in this instance i want to want raised detail on the outside so i'm doing it on the back and you line that wheel up on your line okay and just with medium pressure you just go ahead and push it and follow your line this is not real difficult and this thing follows and tracks really really well and as you see i just ran it straight down okay and that's recessed on this side, but I flip it over and it gives you really nice rivet detail, pops it out. Okay. Now on the instance of these, I'm not going to do it that way. Uh, I did do it on this all the way around and you can see those rivets that turn out really nice. But on this, I'm just going to go ahead and put, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, what, what eight, nine, ten of them in here. So. The way I do it, I take my scriber and I'm going to set it in the corners here and by hand and by eyeball, I'm just going to push and I don't want to push too hard because this will push right through the, the aluminum. But I'm going to give that a nice push and give it a good little indention coming out all four corners. Okay. Staying within the lines of my frame that I have drawn out. And as you see, that starts to put some external rivet detail. Next, I'm going to cut that in half on the frame and go here, then here, and 
and then I'm going to cut each one of those in half. Here, 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 and right there. Perfect. Raised rivet detail. Works like a champ. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take my sanding sponge. It's my 600 grit. I'm going to go ahead and run over the top of this. Now, just kind of give me that that buff look that I was talking about before. Okay, kind of makes everything look nice, like so. And then I can come over here and cut that out with my shears. Now that I have everything done to it, so I'll cut this. I'm gonna cut it in half. Makes it a little bit easier to work with. And then now it's just merely following my lines, my scribe lines. And this is going to get really thin, so you just want to go slow, follow your lines. Okay. Let's cut that off there. Don't want to push it, don't want to screw anything up. Cut this out down here. As you can see, those those Zuron snips are, they're the, the cat's ass right there. Those things are sharp. Boom, boom. And now across the top. And folks, there we go. We have us. A vent frame, brake duct vent frame. Take your steel mesh and those Zurons, cut that with no problem. And you can go ahead and cut yourself out a piece, super glue it on, which I'll do that here after a little bit. And then uh, should be the damn near the perfect size for these brake vents down here. And it's just going to add a little bit of extra detail to the front end of your car and you know it makes it your own no one else has got vent like that make your own go on out and experiment scratch build that's how you do it folks it's not hard uh, practice just kind of jump in with both feet so that's going to do it for this uh <laughs> this episode and uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this a part of the build series or not I'm gonna touch a little bit more on you know the, the Monte Carlo build series I'm gonna touch a little bit more on this uh, during the next build episode but I uh, thought I would pop in and, uh, and answer some questions and give a quick uh, how did I do that type uh, of video I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it um, that said, I want to give one more last plug for the Patreon page. Uh, if you get a chance, please stop by and check us out over there. And I want to welcome uh, Cole, Mike, and David, uh, the three newest Patreon members. I really appreciate your support. It's uh, the generosity uh, of folks like you uh, that are going to make this channel grow and uh, help bring better content, not only here, but over to the Facebook group as well. So with that, here's a few videos of what we've done. Or a few pictures, I'm sorry, of uh, what, what's been done. Uh, as always, y'all stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, let's all, uh, for crying out loud, be good to each other. Good night, and uh, we'll see y'all again soon.